All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing it again. We are once again going on a trip, a week-long trip to Florida and Bahamas. We're hopping on to a short cruise. Whenever I go on a longer trip, usually there's disaster. So that's why I made a point to really record things to kind of see how things are before and how things are after. And potentially this could be the last video clip I have of these two individual tanks. My goodness, it sounds so grim. <laughs> Pair of clowns from Sea Puppies Florida are doing excellence. The pair of, well not pair, two males, Self and Molly's are doing good. Uh, the orange one surprisingly is doing fine. I thought it was gonna kick the bucket because of the uh, fin rods or the little missing piece of the tail fin. Uh, the other one, the green one, it's a beast. Um, they Actually, they're both beasts. They all go after food vicariously, which is fantastic. The torch are looking fantastic. All right, and here's a quick look of the 135 gallon tank before I head out. Uh, I've been just spoiling the tanks of like two, twice a day nori feedings. And look at the yellow tank. The head of lateral line disease is pretty much reversing course almost all the way through. I'm really happy to see this. Did not do anything special. No more salicone because of the um, the crash before. I feel like I'm feeding some of the back bacteria, uh, especially with uh, salicone, which can, may contain amino acid. Don't take my words on it. Uh, but I just cut out all those extra stuff. Just do good feeding, feed noris, make sure the water quality is good and things are just turning around. And let me just step back a little bit to let you see how the tank looks. I try my best to clean up the sand bed so they have some contrasting room against the corals. And I, I really dig this look. And here are the <clears throat> black mollies. I still got all three, one, two. Usually, let me put my finger here and they usually gather, look at this. We got one here, two, and the third one's here. So all three accounted for. They've been also feeding really aggressively and they're really, really growing on me. I call them like the black rockets because they're just like rocketing around all over the place. We also have the two Azure damsels. They are just a pleasure to look at. Uh, same thing with all the other fish. One thing I'm really sad about is that I don't know when it happened, but the yellow line goby f disappeared. It was a strange one because it's so long lived. Usually they live for like year and a half, two years and that's it. That guy has been with me for at least three, three and a half, if not four years. So that was a really, really long lived yellow uh, yellow line goby. And some of you guys mentioned that as well. Uh, but yeah, one of the one day I finally noticed that, hey, I haven't seen him in a while and sure enough, he's gone. So rest in peace. I hope that he had a wonderful, wonderful life in my aquarium. One thing I do notice is that there seems to be a lot more chasing among fish. Uh, namely like from the hippo tang, from the stocky damsels. Definitely feels a little bit more aggressive now. Same thing with the lion tail amphias. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's all the new fish that was introduced like the black mollies and the azure damsels. But it do seems easier uh, to route up these days. Or maybe it is the nori sheets. I don't know. They're just kind of like jockeying for position. Either way. Everybody's happy, everybody's healthy at least, as far as I can see. And this is just like a quick overview of how the tank looks before I leave off to the cruise for a week. I'm really crossing my fingers. I have my camera set up. These are the really, really affordable uh, wise camera. I got two, one pointing at the sump to make sure the water level and stuff like that is sound. The other one is pointing to the tank. Um, we're gonna leave the tank alone for one week. I'll be driving down to Florida, board a cruise, short like three night cruise on utopia of the sea that's one of the newest ship that launched in july so last month really excited to see what it's like and i'll i'll have some clips here
incidents. This is a part of uh, the cruise not a lot of people see, huh? This, this room right here. <laughs> Nina, she, she, can, I see, can we see your mouth? Let's see what happens. Mm, can you see your teeth? Yeah, she slipped and fell on the beach chair. Well, the lounge chair. Unfortunately, the metal, metal piece and uh, a good chunk of her front tooth. Oh. Let's see, can you see it? Oh. She, can you see it? Yeah. I can see it. Yeah, okay. Now, now she can sing that Christmas song. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. <laughs> Four to six weeks later. And we're back! Uh, what's up, briefers? I am in need of a haircut, but you're not watching this video for this. You're watching this video for this. So let's really quickly talk over to 135. I've decided to talk about a mangrove tank in a different video because there are a lot of things I want to talk about in this tank since the crash. And it has been about almost a month since I've been back from the cruise. Life has just been flashing by so quickly when you have kids. First thing we want to cover is the recovery from the crash. I think we have pretty much gone over the hump. Uh, for the most part, all the corals that survived, survive and is regrowing. For example, for the longest time, I'm not sure if the Bill Murray is gonna make it uh, because it started dying off in the middle, as you can see right there. But it has stopped and since then, you can see that it has started growing over to that, that spot. For the goldenrod though, I think that's still kind of playing out. You see that there are clusters in between the corals that got taken over by algae. In fact, you see some bubble algae growing in there as well. So I've decided not to really mess with it, just kind of let it play out and see what happens. And the gold coloration has not fully returned yet. You see the green is like nice bright green. The golden rod has more like a green hue, but I think that will come with time. Just give it a little time and we should be okay. Here's a quick top view as well. Aside from the golden rod, the green slimer is definitely the dominating SPS for this tank at the moment. This is another frag I started. You see that exploded in growth and I have a piece that got knocked down and just put it on the rock and I, I have no doubt that it's gonna grow from there as well. I noticed that one of the TSA grow contest frag actually survived. Uh, I did not frag it back, I just kind of left it. So it kind of just cut off the dying portion off by itself and started regrowing, which is great. A few corals that I'm really glad that made it. Uh, number one is definitely this one. The, this gold or brown's monty with a nice red stripe. Uh, this looks fantastic. Uh, by Reef Sensei, Jim Telegram has a nice piece as well and looking awesome as well. So I'm looking forward to see how the red develops among the gold. Another monty that I'm really glad to have made it is this guy right here. I believe it's called Kong Pao. I think I got it from TSA. Is that nice gold monty with green polyp. I do believe I may have some right among somewhere in there as well. So I think I'm gonna frag it and put it somewhere a little bit more obvious just so that we can enjoy it a little bit more. And since we're on a roll of Montes, I also got this Monty back here that Jim hooked me up with. I'm not sure of the name, but it has recently started coloring up and it's looking fantastic. And while we're talking about something plating, uh, this two chalice, well one SPS and one chalice back there that I've never really talked about. Uh, the one on the left came from uh, Danny from New York and has been with me for about three years at this point. It's just been growing, 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 always battling with uh, lepos next to it and each of them will take turn dying back a little bit. But as I step back, you'll see that they have really just fully utilized that space and they're both kind of gave up and expanding the opposite direction, which is great. And of course we have the Space Invader Pectinia is one of my favorite all around corals. I have three chunks. This is one of, well, not really original. I think it's the second one. Uh, this is one of my quote unquote original that I got back from Jim after he rescued the original. And down here, actually two pieces from Jim uh, when his tank was having issue. He gave me a big chunk. It wasn't doing too hot in my tank. I had to frag it, gave some to Lynn, and I hear some. And I believe I gave uh, at least one back to him already. If not, he's definitely welcome to one of these. But I believe I have gave him one. And that's an issue. Like we always swap and bank core with each other. It's hard to try. Track. Uh, but those two are from the original colony. This was two, but a while back, as you can see. And the front part died off a little bit simply because the light is not really hitting it from this angle. So it's probably time to move it or give it a nice fragging. Since we're talking about corals from Jim, this fancy, nice looking elegance coral also came from Jim, also have a really interesting backstory. 
I have a original Elegance Coral that I think was not doing too well in my tank. So Jim took it over, did fantastic in his tank, also stuck in a corner because it's staining everything. But one day he noticed that one of the polyp actually dropped down on the descent with skeleton. And that's this guy. He mounted it onto a frag plug and then onto a little, um, I guess, plate well it looks kind of small but this thing is big and he gave it back to me and this guy just kept growing so this is one head of uh, elegance coral that came from the original colony this is has this, would you say four or five years old at this point not one of those super rare color morph but it's hardy it's been growing well and it's just absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and has not bothered anything in my tank and I think if you look at the tank right now, the highlight of the tank is absolutely the Ghaniporus once again. They were before, I moved them out, and then I have to move them back in because there's no other space for it, and it just fits well. So we have a red Ghani, pink Ghani, pink Ghani in the back, bet you didn't know that. I also have a yellow centered red Ghani, and we got like a yellow, I don't even know what they call it these days. So it's, these two seem to be similar. So Ghaniporus, for whatever reason, seems to be doing well in this tank and a lot of people ask me okay so they sometimes they struggle with ghanis i did too what changed i noticed they really perked up after i started dosing manganese in terms of trace elements um for almost a year lynn gave me i believe these two and they were just kind of hiding in the skeleton sometimes not even standing for weeks on end i thought it's a goner but they hang on that's the thing with pora even though they're not extending they can just hang on for so long and once i started dosing manganese through the reef moonshine methods i noticed that they just turn around within almost a week and i really pinned the success of ganipora in this tank to the uh dosing of manganese so if you have a wondering that was it and that's that's kind of like my answer and i stand by it uh, so Ganiporas, they're getting huge and I notice a lot of the uh, older reef tank, OG reef tank, always have like a huge either pink or usually the red Ganis. I believe this may be the OLA one and um, uh, hopefully I'm slowly creeping my way into there. And besides the Ganiporas, of course, this tank was um, pretty dominated by torches, at least back then. I had this entire structure, well not the same structure, I'll explain a little bit more a little bit. The, the, all these torches used to go here, just blocking the view. Uh, but I decided to just clear things out, remove the entire aqua rock structure, move this more compact aqua rock structure there, and then just put all the torches there instead in order to just create some space because the tank was just all overgrown and it's become a huge mess. In fact, I think with the uh, coral kind of bouncing back, the, coral, the, the tank is looking a little packed again. So I may do some serious pruning. It may be time to decide on some of the stuff that I really like may have to go. But more on that later. Uh, so all the torches are back there. I did lose, I think, four or five heads through the whole thing. I mean, the head would just take turn um, out here ending. Uh, they're not so much brown jelly, they just kind of waste away. But thankfully that stopped. I chalk it up to just bad nutrients management on my part. But so far, so good. And I was playing around with placements as well and they seem to like that spot. And we also have not really talked about yeah, adding this um, gyri right here. This is one I got from AliExpress. I think it's about 90 bucks. Um, fantastic, fantastic value. But that's a whole other discussion, whole other video that I talk a little bit more. And since we're talking about wavy things, uh, I think it's time to talk about the whipping willows. Uh, the whipping willows I got are doing okay. This one is the Bahama Llamas Weaving Willow. I do have a couple of frags growing out because I owe them to people. I'm supposed to meet people at trade show, but none of them happened this year because I have just simply way overloaded with kid stuff. We got one there. We got two big ones up there. And we also have the uh, Rap Frogs uh, Japanese Whipping Willow that I got from Toronto. The one up top is the one that I got from Lynn from a long time ago and um, Nicholas from Aqua Splenda did mention that it may be the same one and I think he may be right because after putting them side by side like this this one uh, lost its dark green olive coloration and turned a lighter green similar to this one so we'll see I also got some other 
Whipping Willow down here. Uh, this one is from Coral Nursery, supposed to be a Whipping Willow, but I haven't really given it a chance to really expand. This has been shoved in the corner, so I need to get this guy into high flow and see. And these are just your standard metallic green toadstool. That seems to be relatively popular uh, in my area. It's funny, one of the frag turned out this way. So I do think that the amount of light and flow that corals get really impact how it looks visually. The Euphilia Gardens is just kind of holding steady. I did lose two heads of the uh, frog spawn, which is surprising because these guys have been bulletproof for me. But I did lose them. I saw that they're turning a little transparent. So I feel like something may be going on. Maybe the light is too strong, which it should not be because I've not tweaked the light at all. I'm not sure what's going on. But besides the frog spawn, the hammer seems to be super happy. The ACI King Hammer has, I think, popped. It sound looks like two or three more heads at this point. It looks, it looks chunky. And we have the Prince of Darkness. That's no, no longer Prince of Darkness. It got a little coloration. And I think we got a Princess down here that is also looking good. So not too much to report in terms of the uh, Frog Spawn and Hammer. They're just kind of chucking along. Oh, sorry for talking so much, but uh, it's been a while since I've done a vlog style video like this. Uh, okay, let's talk about the livestock. Clams. Clams, not too much to report except that they are happy as clam. Oh, ha, ha, that joke. Now I have to license to do it. Look at those uh, Crocea clams from Clamania. They have, I think, doubled in size. Uh, through the whole crash, it did not bother them one bit. They stayed open the entire time. Super, super happy. Same thing with the, the rest of clam. I was really worried that this guy's gonna kick the buckets along with the babies. Thankfully, they all made it. In fact, honestly, I think they probably appreciated the excess nutrient because they have more food to feed, right? And also look at the fish. We talk about the black mollies. Uh, unfortunately, I did lose one, one of the larger ones, surprisingly. But these two, actually all three, I believe they really adjusted really well to the system. Every time I feed food, they just go after it. They will swim into the flow, turn around, follow the flow to rocket out. I call them the black rockets. So I'm really, really surprised that we actually lost one of them. Um, they seem to have done a really, really good job with the hair algae at least. But even without that, I really enjoy them. It's such a weird thing. Maybe I am a freshwater scrub <laughs> deep down. Uh, they are $4.99 from my local fish store at least a month and a half, two months ago. So I'm thinking about picking up three more because they seem to cluster together. And whenever I come near the tank, look at them. They just kind of come right up to me because they know food is coming. They're stiff. They have personality, surprisingly. Even my damsel doesn't just ignore me. And by the way, the Azure damsels are doing so fantastically well. They add some nice motion to the tank. They're not big and clumsy while they frag up corals like this. I bet that's from uh, my hippo tank. The stocky damsels doing really well. Now is running with the big boys. It is much larger than I was expecting. Like, having known the size, I probably may have skipped it because of the size and the bio load. Uh, this really remind me of one of those uh, African flameback angel, but I do believe that they are less problematic than if you want to do a African flameback. Price wise, normally if you buy it online, I think it's about 60, 70 bucks in, in, in store. I was able to find them for, I think I paid, was it 50 or 60 from a uh, local reefer that I was trying to rehome him because getting a little too aggressive. His tank is a little bit smaller. Amphius are all doing fantastic. I assume these are fully grown because I've had them for three, three and a half, four years almost. Uh, I did lose one, I think it was the last year from jumping, the male actually. I had the lid off for one day. Next morning come down, I was like, oh, whoa, what? And the male jumped out and this is actually one of the female that took a spot. So I, right now I have one, two, three, four, five, five layer tail Amphius. I don't think I talked about it in the video. Um, I may have, I don't remember. Things have been just a blur for me. So five Lyotai Envious, no complaints at all. Um, they eat well, play well, have nice motion. They're just getting a little bit large. But again, I hope that they are fully grown at this point because they've been in the tank for a while. The tanks, the yellow tank, the head and letter line erosion seems to have stopped because I've stepped up the Nori feeding to him and he's looking brilliant as ever. This guy's here to stay. The hippo tank, I have been contemplating rehoming him because the hippo tank has a tendency to a uh, reputation to start sampling corals once they get to a certain size and um, when they get much larger I feel like this tank is gonna be too small for him but it's gonna take a while for now it's still okay uh, I feel like maybe another one or two years maybe okay or and I know some people say that yeah the whole lifetime should be okay but ideally I believe this type of uh, tank 
will do much better in a six foot tank. This is a four foot tank, but a little bit deeper, 30 inches deep instead of the standard uh, 24 inches. So I still feel okay with it, but at some point this guy, I know we'll need to find a bigger home for him. For the next fish, I may need to feed a little to see if he'll come out. All right, let's see. Are you coming out? Oh, there he is. Upside down goby. Look at this guy. So these are super, super crypt. Uh, I was the secret. Super, super cryptic fish. I spooked it. This is my back. For a while, I have two, but these days I've only seen one. So I sus suspect maybe I've lost one. But they're so cryptic that I did not even see the first one for six months. I thought it died, so I bought a second one. So for a long time, I had two in this tank, and then until one day, almost a year later, both of them show up at the same time. Like oh. So who knows, maybe it's there, maybe there's egg and just kind of guarding the egg. Do they even guard egg? I don't know. But I just know that up to a couple months ago before the crash, I see two of them once in a while would hang out pretty close to each other. But for the last two or three weeks, I've only seen one. So fingers crossed. And speaking of pairs, we do have the Bengai Cardinal still just kind of hanging out. It's not really doing much in this tank. So uh, they're just, kind of there. I know it's kind of like a bad thing to say about fish, but that's how I feel. They're just kind of there at the moment. I'm still hoping that they will breed for me. Please. Pretty please. So we'll see. We'll see how things goes. And one interesting addition that I want to mention is um, Tiger Sand Kongs or Kong, tiger, Sand Tiger Kongs. I recently added one more and they've been seeing each other. In fact, this is right before the whole SPS crash fiasco. I'm not sure if it's related. I'm not going to speculate. I ordered some cleanup crew and uh, yeah, things went haywire after that for whatever reason. And the two Kongs have just been hanging out once in a while, which is really interesting to see. Uh, I thought they would have no personality, but hey, what do you know? But I don't see the other one, so I'll keep an eye out and I'll update you guys uh, in the next video, I guess. Oh, look at this. This is another coral from Lynn uh, that came from Pacific East Aquaculture. I believe she called it the Rainbow Chalice. If you look really carefully on the eye, it has a rainbow color. I'm not sure if it's gonna come through in the, in the camera because it's so subtle. But um, before, the eye seems to be a little bit larger for whatever reason. The coloration, at least the ring of color around each of the eye is, become, uh, is much more apparent. But over time, hopefully it'll go back to its uh, former glory. But finally, to cap it off, what I'm really happy about are Zoas. The Zoas are actually opening now. For months, all the Zoas are closed and looking sad. But I know the tag is back on track when all the Zoas are opened. Look at this. Even random ones I see on on the ground. Look at the rock. I have some zoas. That plug that I thought, where is it? That plug that I thought was empty. Turns out it was a plug with zoas on it and it opened up. So that tells me that, hey, maybe things are not so bad anymore. But looking at it, yeah, I need to kind of clean up the aquascape again because things are getting cluttered once again. Um, I do like the negative space in this corner. See? So instead of just like packed full of random stuff, now you actually can sort of see the scape. Wow, we still got random stuff right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment on what is your favorite coral in this tank at the moment. I definitely miss all those high-end SPS that I had because a few of them are doing really well, but it is what it is. We rolled the punches. Uh, for now, I think my favorite coral it's about the Akanis. I'll say the Ghanis. Uh, you can't really beat the flowing motions, the color, how easy it is, at least in this tank. Um, yeah, I think Ghani. In terms of fish, my favorite are actually the Black Mollies at the moment. I know, I know. So what is your favorite coral? What is your favorite fish? Leave it in the comment below and I'll see you next video.